UK. So let me go ahead, share screen. So what I want to do today, let me pull it up and then I'll explain it. Uh, chapter eight. So what we've done up to this point is we've uh, last week we talked about frames and machines. I tried to get that in because I knew we wouldn't have uh, be able to do it this week. So I want to talk about friction. So the quiz that we're going to have on uh, Wednesday is just going to cover machines. All right. So that will be something based off the homeworks posted. So I would look at the homework, make sure you're, you know, you don't have to finish it all, but I mean, be familiar with the problem types. I picked a, I picked a pretty straightforward problem. It's very similar to one I've given you in both, uh, that went over in both the lecture and one that's on the homework. So you should have, hopefully have a problem with it. Uh, I, uh, I have to be gone tomorrow, uh, so I will have my office hours on Wednesday instead of uh, one to three tomorrow. So the homework is still due on Friday, so it shouldn't impact you. Um, next week's quiz will be on friction, and that'll be Wednesday, and that'll be the last quiz you have. The other thing is homework nine, number nine. Um, that's the fr friction homework. It's not collected. I don't grade it. Uh, it's posted under week nine materials. So if you go into the module and you look under week nine materials, you'll be able to see it. And uh, so I would uh, take a look at it. Uh, so for the final, because that's coming up right around the corner, the final is going to really emphasize the stuff we did in chapter six, the centroid moment of inertia, there'll be a problem on that, and then likely a friction problem. Uh, and so I would, you know, granted the final still a little bit away, but I would still, you know, it's never too early to start reviewing the material. So what I wanted to do is have a final review late in dead week. So probably uh, Friday, Thursday, I'm not sure yet when the time will be. I'm trying to find a time that'll be where everyone can make it. So it might be, it'll probably end up being in the evening, um, but I'm not sure yet. So that's the plan so, so far. Uh, I don't think uh, there's anything else I want to tell you. Uh, so friction, uh, we're going to talk about friction today. And I can only scratch the surface uh, mainly because the, there's a lot to friction. And I don't want to delve into it too deeply here. Well, we just don't have time for it, but also because the friction that we're dealing with in statics is pretty much an extension of what you guys covered in, in uh, physics 144. And so uh, all, as I'll explain, uh, understanding that mu static uh, times the normal force is your maximum friction force, that's going to be key to solving a lot of these different problems. All right, so in terms of friction, uh, we'll talk about general friction. Uh, there's general friction, there's wedges, which is a special case, and then there's belt and pulley friction. Uh, belt and pulley friction won't be on the final, so there is a lecture on it, but it's not going to be on the final. So I don't like to say that, Joey, because it means like don't, don't ignore it, but it is, it's actually an interesting topic, but it's just kind of a specific uh, niche, so to speak, and so it's not real super important to uh, in the big picture. Plus, it's a fairly easy concept. It's kind of the idea of wrapping a rope around a, uh, a tree, and then you use the friction of the rope around the tree to either lower or raise things. So, but uh, if you ever saw the movie, um, what the hell was that one called? Uh, never mind. It doesn't matter. Uh, it's Monday, so bear with me. All right. So, Getting back to this, um, uh, the big difference with friction compared to the other material that you guys have covered is the idea that it, uh, it in the past, we've always, everything's been completely static. Here, we're looking at things that are impending motion. And so that motion, if we're dealing with something on the incline, it can be motion going up an incline, down an incline, or it can stay put. And, or in other situations, it'll be moving to the left, moving to the right, moving up, moving down. And so there's multiple variables. And so that's what makes friction a little more tricky. As you'll see in the examples I'm gonna do, the math is, is fairly, fairly easy. 
but it's just understanding how it's applied, I think, is where uh, people find challenges. So what I want to do first is let's go ahead. about inclining. Now you probably remember that if you have an object on incline like that and it has some mass that and it's on an incline of some angle, uh, there's a simple derivation that, that shows you that if you take the tangent of that angle where the object moves, then that's equal to mu static. So it, it and so the derivation is just look, it's it basically it comes down to um, the uh, mg sine theta equals your friction force and mg cosine theta equals your um, normal force. And so if you divide those, you get tangent theta equals mu static, since that's the ratio of the friction force to normal force is that. So it's a pretty easy relationship. Um, and so this is something you may remember from uh, your um, physics. And so our simple experiment you could do in high school, you just raise the object up and when it slides, you measure that angle, and then you take the inverse tangent of it and that gives you the coefficient of friction. So th those types of problems, you know, they're good for fundamentals, but let's, uh, I wanna look at it a little differently now. If you have, because we know that the normal force will dictate the fr what, what the friction value is. So if we have something like this, now, where, and that looks that's awfully out of focus. So that's so out of focus. There, that's better. Is that better? Yeah, see that? All right. I don't know why it's so focus. Okay, there we go. All right. So, so in this case, what we have is we have a force P that we're applying to our block. Now, this is 20 degrees we're given. This is 15 degrees. All right. And so let's ignore that up there. And so P is given as 150 newtons and weight of the block is given as 500 newtons and mu static is 0 0.35, okay? So the question is, if we apply P equals 150, what will happen? So, so the idea is if you can imagine if you apply a big enough force, you'll probably slide it up the hill. If, if the force is zero, then it might just slide down. Um, probably will just slide down. And if uh, the um, force is somewhere in between, then it'll just sit there. So what we can do is, is just like, and this is kind of setting up how you would solve these problems. Um, so you, you have your, you have this, you can treat the box as a particle. And so if we go ahead and we draw our, our planes and it works good with friction to have the plane um, change your X and Y. So what we have here is um, we, we tilted our axis. So P now is 35 degrees because we add the 20 and the 15 to it. And then we have our normal, or not our normal force, but our weight, sorry, and that's at 20 degrees. 
And then we have our normal force here. And then let's assume that friction force, we're gonna assume that this is gonna push it up the hill, but we don't know. So we're gonna point friction force down. All right. So from that, we can really uh, calculate uh, P, we can, well, not P, I'm sorry. We can calculate uh, how much force is being uh, applied to the object going up, how much friction force is available. So now we know friction force uh, is, is just a sole function of when it comes to maximum friction force max is just mu static times n. But that's only for maximum. So we can't just automatically set that equal to that because we don't know if it's at a maximum or not. So first thing we'll do is we'll say, let's sum the forces in the y direction. Sorry. And if we do that, we know that we have um, 500. So that's the weight, and that's going to be uh, cosine 20 degrees, and then plus, sorry, not plus, um, minus 150 sine 35 degrees, and then plus n equals zero. Or you can just write it as, um, oftentimes I'll write n equals this. So on the friction problems, when you sum the forces, you might get, this is like a step after you do it, you may just automatically say, okay, well, I know n's going up, these are going down. So you, guys, you just write, might write it with this, n equals 500 cosine 20 plus 150 sine 35. And so if you solve, you get n is equal to 556. Now, if we want to find, so we know that's how much based on, that's the, that's the normal force. So we can calculate our maximum friction. We just can't assume that that's the same as what's here. So the maximum friction we have available then is going to be 0 0.35 times 556, which is going to give us 194.6 newtons. All right, so that's our maximum friction that we have available. Now, if we sum our forces in the x direction to zero, then what do we have? We have um, going in the um, the friction force, right, plus um, 500 sine 20 and then minus P cosine 35. Now, um, if we assume everything adds to zero. So now let's look at that, what that represents. So, so 500 times this, that's about 171.0. Uh, this should be about 122.9 thereabouts, all right? So that means that if this is to equal zero, this is 48.1, okay? So what that tells me is that um, when I apply, this is how much P I'm applying, 122.1.9 newtons. And, but the gravity wants it, gives it 171 newtons going down. So that means that I was correct that this, the friction force is pointing in that direction. It's 48.1. So at this load, at this load of P equals 150, then the object is just sitting still. So you haven't, you have just 48.1 newtons because you just, the, because the fact that you're pushing up and it wants to go downhill, this is the friction that you have available. Um, this is the maximum friction. 
And so as long as you don't exceed that, this object isn't going to move anywhere. Okay. So that's the that's kind of the important takeaway here. And if we were to draw this, um, you know, as a if we were to draw a little box, we could have it as you have this much going down, and then you have the 122 and the 41 roughly going up. Okay. That makes sense to everybody. Now you may ask, well, what at what p value would I need in order to move the object? And so it's uh, it's something we can determine, but we have to realize that as we increase p, we also increase the normal force because we're putting we're pushing down on the object, therefore normal force is going to be greater. But we can solve that. And what we do is, and I'm going to just walk you through it here instead of, uh, um, because it's a, it's not really, it's, it's, I, I like this example because it, uh, it demonstrates how substitution of the friction force allows you to find things. Um, and one of the big things is that the relationship between normal force and friction force is really just new. So let's say we have our P, we know it's an angle V and theta, and we're given those angles here. Um, just It's just the same angles that we had before. So we assume up just slipping. So we want to know how much, what's the P value going to be? So P equals question mark. That's what we're trying to find. So what we do is first, we let's just look at our, our system and sum the forces in the X. So again, because we're assuming that we're going to get the P so that it slides up, we know that friction force is pointing down. So we know friction force plus W, the weight sine 20, minus P cosine 35 has to be zero. All right, so that's our first equation. Our second equation is just summing the forces in the Y where we get N, normal force, is equal to P sine 35 plus W cosine 20. All right, and so now I've kind of, I, instead of setting it all equal to zero, I just move the N over like I did earlier. But what this does is this gives me a relationship for normal force, because that's gonna help me. So at slippage, I know that the friction force is gonna be mu static times N. That's my parameter that I can, I know is, is, exists in this problem. So uh, if I take mu static N, I can substitute it back into equation one here. And so what I get mu static N instead of friction force, and then it's just W sine 20 minus P cosine 35, just like up here. Okay, so that's that equation. So now I can substitute equation two into this. And that's really all I'm doing is I'm, I'm just putting in N, I'm substituting in N. And what that allows me to do is it isolates P. I know what W is, I'm assuming W is still 500. But now I want everything so that I only have one variable. So I go ahead and plug that in. And I go ahead and, you know, this substitute, solve. And I end up getting a value of about 542 newtons. So, so I know that if I, if I apply a P of roughly 542.458 or whatever. And the thing with friction is that it's really hard to get an exact number because if you've ever done, ever moved something, you notice that it, friction is not a smooth uh, process, meaning that the, the point at which a object breaks loose and starts to move, it's not, it's, it's, uh, it jumps around a lot because of the nature of friction and the way that two surfaces contact one another. Um, whole books have been writ written on it and I read some of those in graduate school. And if you ever have trouble sleeping, I can loan you one, pitch out just like that. So uh, one of the things, and so one of the things I, or the takeaway here, I think is that even though you're increasing the normal force by increasing P, the rate at which the normal force increases is less than the force of pushing the object up the ramp. And so, 
So obviously if it was a one-to-one, -one, you'd never reach it because you'd always be increasing normal force and the friction would keep climbing away. But the, obviously the, the normal force doesn't increase as fast as the force to push it up the, the incline. Good, so hopefully that makes sense. Um, and it's mainly just to, so you can understand friction in general uh, and simple, simple examples, I think, are best to understand the uh, basic concepts. All right, so let's look at another example. Now, so one of the things about friction problems is that uh, um, they're unlike other, well, none of the problems will really just start plugging in numbers. I highly discourage you doing that. But friction, I think, uh, as much as any, you really need to look at the system and understand what is actually physically going on. So here we have a, uh, a beam it's sitting on a dolly, and it's also on a, a ledge. So now, you'll notice that it gives you some, it gives you some values. But one of the things it says in the problem, it says that note, the dolly is higher than the platform. So that's actually a significant piece of information. Um, so then I'm gonna go ahead and draw this real quick. And massively exaggerated, but Give me a second, I'll show you. Okay, so let's go ahead and so so we, we know that the dolly is higher than, and so I've drawn this kind of as a uh, um, exaggerated view. But what that says is because it's higher, it means that this point, it's a point contact here and on this corner. And so what we can do is we then know that <clears throat> the normal force is right on that corner. And of course, friction force is going to be opposite. We know that normal force is right on that corner. And this keeps going. And so this distance here, this is normal force at D, and of course friction at D. And up here we have 1200. So distances, we know that this is five feet from the end. And the distance from here to here is, is eight feet. All right. So what we wanna know is if we push the dolly this way, what's gonna happen? Is the dolly and this going to slide along here, or is the dolly just going to move and this will stay put? So this is a reasonable, a reasonable uh, question because it, you, you don't know what's going to happen. You, it's either going to um, beam and dolly slide, and so I guess I should say is. Uh, Actually, let me rewrite that. Um, really, what we have is um, beam and dolly move across um, ledge, or the dolly slides under beam. All right. So hopefully that makes sense. So it's either gonna move, this is either gonna go like that and this will stay put, or this whole thing will both move and move over here. So math-wise, it's pretty easy to figure out. Um, it's just the main thing is looking at this and understanding what is actually happening. So first thing we wanna figure out are what are NA and what are ND. So we can get that simply by summing the moments about A is zero. If we do that, we know that ND times eight minus 1200 times five gives zero. So do the complex math, we get ND is 750. 
that leaves Na to be 450. And of course we have mu static equal to 0 0.3 is given the problem. So really uh, it comes down to which one has the greater friction. And so we can see, um, we already know kind of, because if the normal forces, which one ever has the greater normal force is gonna have greater friction. So without even really looking at it, we can see that it, Na has the lower normal force. It's gonna have the lower friction since they're both the same value. And so the thing is going to just move the dolly and that together, right? Because we can say the max friction Fa max is proportional to N. And since um, the friction force at A is less than the friction force at D, it's gonna move, okay? So that's pretty easy math-wise, but understanding, you know, conceptually, that's the, that's the part that you wanna get in your head. And, you know, maybe for some of you, this is really simple. Um, I found historically that friction is a, a little harder for in general to understand because it's kind of a different, uh, uh, I, it's a different, uh, I don't know, discipline, not really discipline, I'm looking for a good word. It's kind of a different approach than the other problems that we've covered in statics. All right, so any questions on this? We understand why we did it and how we did it? All right, good. Okay, so let's look at uh, another problem. It's more, so if you're taking, when, when if, if and when you take dynamics, there's this obsession, at least the first few weeks of doing uh, pulleys and blocks sliding. So you'll have blocks uh, you release a block from rest and you'll want to calculate the acceleration of another block. And if I didn't know better, I would think that once Emmys graduated, all we did was look at block sliding up and down inclines. It's just, uh, but it's something you got to do. So, but uh, let's, so let's look at this problem. Um, I guess I said, you know, we call it a problem, but it, Maybe it should be like a, a fun challenge for the morning. Maybe that's a better way to describe it. So first thing, let's go ahead and draw our object. So, so we have, so we see we have our pulley. And so um, we want to know if with this problem is what's the range of mass so that this um, object doesn't slide down the incline and, and it, or go up the incline. So we either, we want it to basically stay at rest. If, it's, if the mass is too small, it's gonna go down. If it's mass is too big, it's gonna slide up. So first thing we do on a problem like this, and I'll do this right now and encourage you to do the same, is draw a free body diagram for each object. So first I'm gonna draw a free body diagram for my block, all right? And then also I would draw what you think the pulley looks like too. So that's the best way to practice is so watching me do it, try it yourself. So take a minute, try to draw the free body diagram.
Okay, so, so we start off, we have our block, we have a normal force of A, uh, we know it's 25 degrees, but we've tilted our axis. Uh, we have, um, and we have two times the tension going up here because of the way our pulley is. Uh, now our friction force, if it's gonna slide up, our friction force is going to point this way, right? So if it's sliding, if it's gonna slide down, oh wait, I wrote that fast backwards. Sorry about that. I just realized that because that didn't make any sense. Yeah, this is slide down. So it's gonna slide down. If it's gonna slide up, it's on the other side. There we go. So, so slide up, friction is going that way, slide down, it's going that way. And so that's really all, it, that's all it consists of. And then if we think of our pulley, um, what was our pulley? It had a, if we draw a line through it, so we have basically this, and then this goes down to another one. So this comes here, comes down to a, another pulley, which goes like this and that, like that. So if we cut it in half like that, that's our weight. And basically we have T, 3T is equal to our mass of B, all right? And that's just because you just take the pulley and cut it like that. So now we know the relationship here. So, and we know the relationship here. So really what we wanna find is we wanna find what T is. That's what's gonna help us is to find T. So if we find T, uh, that's not, uh, just can be done just by summing forces in the X. So um, if we go ahead and let's assume that we're going to sum the forces in the X in this case and four to zero, and this is gonna slide up. So if it's gonna slide up, then we have two T minus mu static <clears throat> NA minus 100 times <clears throat> sine 25 equals zero. So if we go ahead, now we know that NA, we can sum the forces in the Y, sorry, I got ahead of myself. Um, we know that NA minus W cosine 25 equals zero. And this is simple because there's no force pushing down other than gravity. So we know that the um, cosine 25 of, of, the, of the weight is the normal force. And so that gives us a value of 90.6. And of course, we know that our mu static value was given as 0.3, right, from the original problem. And so if we plug that in here, we have essentially 2t minus 0 0.3 times 90.6 minus 100 sine 25 equals zero. So our T value in this case, when we subtract, is we get a value of 34.7 pounds, okay? And so that's how much force required, that's how much tension is required to slide up. Now the slide down, it's, it's the same equation, except the friction's in the opposite direction. Sorry about that. So I'm jumping around a little bit there. So slowing down, I got my normal force here is 90.6. Uh, Three body, if I wanna slide up, I have two T and then I have mu static times N going that way, which is opposite. And then I, of course, the weight of the object is opposite. So I plug in my values, I get that. So if I do it the same way, only slide down, then that means if I'm sliding down, 
then friction and T are in the same direction. So now it's 2T plus mu static Na, and then minus 100 sine 25. So if we plug in everything like before, then the difference is T is equal to only 7.54 pounds. And that makes sense because if you're going to pull something up an incline against friction, it's going to take a lot more than just um, holding it there because now friction's working for you instead of against you. So since T is uh, between these two values and we know that 3T equals the mass, then we can then safely calculate what the difference is. And it turns out to be, if we take three times this and three times that, we get uh, 22.6 is less than or equal to the mass, which is less than or equal to 104.2 in pounds. Okay. Any questions of that? I know I went through a little quick. Um, sorry about that, but uh, does that make sense to everybody? That's the important thing: is that you followed my my logic. Is that you know you had the butterfly? I don't butterfly. Why did I say that? I guess I'm thinking of the Apple MacBook. Sorry. Um, uh, you have the pulley with the three T's. You have that. You have your free body diagram. So really, it just comes down to being consistent with your answers and consistent with your directions. So good, well, I'm glad. Um, you know, if, if, if you think of something, holler or you can ask me in office hours too. Okay, so I wanna do this next problem. This one's a little more involved, but I think uh, this one is a good example. Let's see how much time we have, 10 minutes. Well, we'll come back to the other one if we can. Um, but I want to show you this problem. This one's actually uh, another one that's uh, math-wise is, is pretty straightforward. But what I want you to do is, um, again, like before, is go ahead and draw your free body diagram. So before you do that, though, let's look at the problem. So we have a block that has a mass of B. The mass of the block B is three kilograms. So it's half the mass of the cylinder, which is six kilograms. And we're going to apply a moment to it uh, to see if it'll move. And so we wanted to know which, uh, which will um, move. Will the block start to slide or will that cylinder sit and spin? So we can imagine if the, if the block was an immovable object, then that cylinder would just spin in place and uh, never go anywhere. So that's the question is, which is which? And it's, sim it's simple. And, and it, it's just, as long as you keep track of all the forces, it's, it's a fairly easy calculation. So, and there is some extraneous information they give you, but so go ahead, take a moment, draw the free body diagram for each object. And so you're gonna draw them separately. So draw it for the, for the cube. And then go ahead and try to draw it for the cylinder. Okay, so hopefully you had a chance to draw it. Um, so you have two, you have the cube, and then you have the cylinder. So the 
as you see, you have 3G, three, time, three kilograms times gravity. Uh, so that value is equal to 29.4. So weight is equal to 29.4 newtons, all right? And this over here is equal to 58.8 newtons. Sorry, not the best form. So just uh, it's easier just to cut out the middle man. There, so WC equals that, and the weight of V equals the big equal sign, 29.4, all right? So, so this equals that, that equals that. And so if we assume that this is the block that could possibly move, we figure out, well, how much force would it take to move? Well, from looking at just summing the forces in the X to zero, we see that whatever that normal force is, is just equal to my friction. So it's gonna have to apply some normal force. So, so friction max, and so we know that friction max in this case is just going to be equal to 29.4 times 0 0.5 or give us 14.7 newtons. So now the question is, um, does this generate more than 14.7 newtons? Well, we can see that if uh, we look at the friction force, that's just going to be equal to mu static times n. Now, in this case, n is just equal to the weight. So it's the same as 0 0.4 times 50. That's a 58.8. And so that value is, of course, bigger than that value. It's about 23.5 newtons. So what this says is that um, if, if this thing, if we apply a moment to it, and it's not, we're not asked to find that moment, that's certainly something we could do. Um, but what we want to overcome is the 23.5 I'm sorry, we want to overcome 14.7 newtons. And we have up to 23.5 newtons of friction in order to keep this from spinning in place. So this block will therefore move before this will spin in place. All right. Does that make sense to everybody? So, so you probably notice a common theme with all these problems is that you're uh, one is a good free body diagram. Uh, the second is the relationship between normal force and friction force. So normal force is usually in, in Y direction and friction force is in X. And so through substitution of friction force equals mu static times N, you're allowed to then switch between X and Y. And this allows you to do a lot of different substitutions that uh, allow you to eliminate things. And so it's a lot of algebra more so in these, just getting rid of, of unknowns and, and reducing your equations to a single variable. And you do a few examples and it should be pretty straightforward. But uh, again, if you have questions, ask me in office hour. Um, but uh, that's all I have for now. I, the other problem would take too long and I'll leave you hanging. So, uh, but, uh, any questions on anything? Yeah, I have a question. Um, I thought All right. that, well, um, thanks for coming this morning and I'll either see you in hours or whenever at the next uh, um, review session. All right. Thank you guys. Thank you.